Well, it's the, probably the longest study unbroken of any wild animal in the world. Uh, the only possible exception is the Japanese monkeys, but we didn't know about that for a long time. It was all kept within Japan. And so what we learn about the chimpanzees, they're very close to us. They share 98.7% of our DNA and have many other similarities. But the biggest difference is the explosive development of our intellect that makes us more different from all the other animals, although they are way more intelligent than science used to give them credit for. But on the other hand, no animal can compete with you know, social media and the, the internet, sending a rocket up to Mars, camera creeping around on the surface of a faraway planet, space travel, all that. So it's absolutely bizarre and awful that the most intellectual being to ever walk the planet is destroying planet Earth, our only home. And I think there's been a disconnect between clever, clever brain and the human heart, love and compassion. Roots and Shoots and the Jane Goodall Institute are working to educate young people who will then grow up into the decision makers of the future. But if I'm meeting someone who's a climate change denier, even though they see what's happening, I, the only way to really change them, if you can, is by telling stories. You've got to reach the heart. It's no good arguing because they're not going to listen. Um, but if you can tell the right story and reach the heart, sometimes you see change. Mm -hmm. Well, what, what I do, you know, a lot of people come to me uh, feeling in despair. They say, I've looked around the world and, and uh, you know, people tell me to think globally and act locally, but I'm so depressed, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. What difference can I make? And I say, well, don't think globally first. Act locally, get some people. What do you care about, homelessness? Do you care about discrimination? Do you care about litter in the street? Do you care about stray dogs? Well, find some people who agree with you or start on your own. And when you do that, you find, well, I am making a difference here. And then you can realize, especially if you're part of something like Roots and Chutes or some other organization, well, we're all doing it around the world. So there is hope after all. Mm -hmm. That's the main message of Roots and Chutes. Every day you live on this planet, you make some impact and you can choose what sort of impact you make. The young people are my greatest hope for the future. You know, I have four main reasons for hope, but young people come first because once they understand the problems and they're empowered to take action, they're so filled with energy, determination, uh, nothing's going to stop them. We are changing the world. And it's very inspiring to see how this generation is rising to face these new challenges, which we've created. We created climate change. We created loss of biodiversity. We created the pandemic. And all of this by our disrespect of people and our disrespect of, of the environment and animals. Well, I hope that people, as I shall tell them, re realize that they're making a difference every day. Billions of ethical choices that people are making around the world every day who understand can create big change. I want them to realize that they as an individual matter and what they do matters. I want them to understand the things we have to overcome to slow down climate change and loss of biodiversity. Uh, uh, we've got to eliminate poverty because if you're really poor, you destroy the environment to live, cut down the trees for land to grow food or charcoal or timber. And if you're in an urban area, you buy the cheapest product. You can't afford as we can to say, did it harm the environment when it was made? Was it cruel to animals? Is it cheap because of unfair wages paid in other parts of the world? And make ethical choices. So if everybody does that, other people, of course, can make much bigger change. And I hope everybody who's not involved in Roots and Shoots will get their children involved or the children themselves will find a way of getting the program into their school and getting advice from the Jane Goodall Institute of Canada and understand the importance today of bringing indigenous voices into the equation. 
because they have been stewards of the land for thousands of years. And it's beginning. And I know that in, in many countries, the indigenous people are being invited much more often into big conferences. They're being moved into the United Nations and things like that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully we can still make use of the wisdom of the elders. Mm 